welcome to the April edition of Eat and Thrive here with Zanae Brooks, Financial Director at Cummins Inc. And we are focusing on side hustle essentials, right? Everybody's got a little something going on. I'm Isha Wide. I am the Director of Development here at BU Wellness Network. I'm your guest host. Our nutrition department puts on these amazing episodes every month just giving us easy, simple recipes that we can have healthy food options and having a little guide to assist us with. So let's get into it. So we're doing a, a gnocchi recipe, right? And mm -hmm. I know you're working on a low carb, yes. vegan, vegetarian kind of lifestyle. I'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so it's actually part of, uh, I saw I'm the first lady of a church, um, spiritual background. And so it's part of our corporate fast nice. leading up to Lent. And so I gave up carbs but I work out a lot and so I can eat like potatoes, but I gave up bread and pasta and all of that. So just kind of trying to lean out some too, so. That's right. Yeah. So our gnocchi is an alternative to carbs, so it's got a potato base. Mm -hmm. I'm really not a familiar with gnocchi that often because I do lean a lot into carbs. So this is a good opportunity for me to try something different too. Yeah, and um, I think I was telling you before, Olive Garden has a good yes. gnocchi. I think it's gnocchi sausage and uh, Spinach okay. soup or something. It's really good. So. Similar to what we got mm -hmm. going on. So exactly. this is a great way for us to jump it up. Yeah. So we've gonna saute some vegetables, get our gnocchi in here. Um, you can master the knife work okay. over there with the onion. Got it. Garlic, carrots, okay. and then right. add some more veggies over here too. So let's get our apron. Oh. So we are going to saute some mushrooms in our gnocchi. Um, we turn our heat on here, kind of medium, lowish. This is super fancy, so we've got some different numbers, but we'll just get, get some oil going in here. Um, one of the key tips that we've learned recently is that we don't want to drench our mushrooms, yeah. apparently. Yeah. We'll just wipe them off, um, so that way, <laughs> it absolutely does. So, I think this will help us retain some flavor. You know what kind of mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, what are these? Just like uh, an Bella, Bella mushrooms. Sure. This kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, talk to us a little bit about whether or not we should have a corporate job with our side hustle, um, what's that kind of like, how do we manage that? Or is it recommended or not? Yeah, I think people talk about multiple streams of income a lot. Um, I think it depends on what your ultimate goal is. Mm -hmm. So if your goal is to eventually, you know, work for yourself, then having a corporate job and a side hustle, like will that allow you to put enough attention into the side business to really scale it? and you know put all the resources and you know get all the information you need not sure i think some people do it but i've, I've read a couple of books and if you look at you know some entrepreneurs they'll say like if you're really serious about your side business and you want to grow it you would do it yeah um but what yeah about? there are some people that do work their corporate jobs because they want to have the stability of the income mm -hmm. and the benefits and all of those things so if you don't you know if you can manage it go for it I think sometimes we forget about like the future plans. Right. So retirement, what does that look like when you've got this side hustle forever? For and sure. For not sure. having that as a factor. Yeah, I know a lot of business owners, small business owners, and they they don't have their retirement set up. Mm -hmm. They don't have you know insurance. Um, you know, been any of the benefits. They're so focused on like let me just start this business, whether it's hair care or nails or selling products and they don't really think about the long time mm -hmm. until it's too late and then you're 40 or 50 you're like I don't have a plan for when I retire my kids don't really have insurance or it's so expensive because you got to get it through the government mm -hmm. um, so it's all of those things that you got to think through when you want to come out of a corporate job you which said, isn't for everybody I was gonna say, <laughs> you said you know a lot of people that are small business owners and again we hear we want multiple streams of income, but everybody's not built to be an entrepreneur. They're not, because I, to me, I think it takes, you have to put more energy into being an entrepreneur. There's the sacrifice, the instability of the income, um, 
all the other benefits that we talked about that you may or may not have. And it's sometimes more than a 40 hour work week. Oftentimes more than a 40 hour work week, right? And so people don't, they forget about that part. Um, and so a lot of times when you are trying to do all of these different multiple streams of income, if you just worked a corporate job, that would probably, you would probably get more than all of these other side hustles. So it just really depends on what, you know, folks want to do and mm -hmm. what's their end goal. Organization. Yeah. Yeah. That risk or uncertainty mm -hmm. is stressful. Yeah. And so a lot of people, if you don't know how to adapt, you don't know how to, you know, adjust to the times and even knowing mm -hmm. some months may be great, some right. aren't. Yeah. Get you a job. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So. Some some people that gotta work. Like <laughs> some people gotta run, you know, all of these other organizations. So it's okay. So we're gonna heat this up, um, maybe use the tongs, tongs, get these mushrooms going. Okay. So welcome, Zanae. Thank you. Zanae Brooks, finance director yeah. of Cummins Inc. here local. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do, how you got to Cummins, yeah. and what's that? Yeah, so um, the finance director at Cummins, which is really Cummins Foundation, like the corporate responsibility part. So I oversee all of our granting, our um, data tracking, and paying all the grants and getting the money out the door. Um, so I've been there about two years. Before then, I spent like 13 years in public accounting. So I was an auditor, not-for-profit organization. Um, also, just on a bunch of community boards. I'm the president of um, the National Association of Black Accountants, the regional president. And, on the board for the NCPA Society and the Indy Chambers Business Opportunity Initiative. Okay. Um, a lot of what I do is trying to um, combine my career and expertise as an accountant, as a CPA, with like really giving back to the community and mm -hmm. trying to help people. Because as an auditor, uh, especially with not for profits, I know you know all these grassroots organizations and small businesses. Um, sometimes they don't have the financial support, the operational support. They don't have the expertise. Um, and then they're not able to get funding, mm -hmm. you know, government funding, grants, all of that, because they just don't have the infrastructure or the knowledge. And so um, I try to work really hard to bridge that gap nice. for people. So in addition to that, I'm the first lady of a church and workout warrior and all of the things. So. Workout warrior, <laughs> like too. All the things. Yeah. Uh, I think it's awesome that you can use your experience and expertise as a way to help the community. Yeah. Because like you said, everybody's got an idea. Yeah. We hear you know, social media and all these things that tell you to just jump out there. Mm -hmm. But you gotta do your but homework. How? But how? Yeah. yeah. What do I do? Like I have this great idea. I want to start a business, which is great. We need creators and innovators and all For of sure. that. And they're not always business people, mm -hmm. which is okay. So like go hire an accountant, go hire mm -hmm. a tax person, right? And so it's just like helping people connect the dots. Do you see that people will usually come to you and say, Hey, can you be on my board? Yeah, yeah. Can you be an advisor? Yes. And yes. you have a limit. All the things. Yeah, and so that's why, that's the importance of like me being part of the Indiana CPA Society mm -hmm. and NABA because like people will come to me and so I try to be a connector. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I can't do it, I don't have capacity, but let me connect you with like, these other people yeah. um, and try to provide some resources. I'm trying to put other people on too. So yeah. I think I, you know, around Indy, I can probably be like one of the faces of accounting when people think CPAs, but I'm like, there's a ton of other you know, young mm -hmm. black people out here that could do the same thing. So I'm trying to also, you know, bring up other people to be able to do the same thing that I'm trying to do. Noki getting a little brown. Don't judge my chopping. <laughs> We're not mincing our garlic. Yeah, that's chopping. We're just chopping. Yeah. So we'll caramelize these. Get these cooked now. Let's start with it. Add some carrots over here. Get those cooked down. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Add a little color. Yeah. So it's not all brown. It's good. So I'm gonna add the broth, mm -hmm. which is not non-sodium, so it has salt in it. Um, so we'll add enough so that it's actually like soupy and not um, like chilly or thick. 
And so we'll let that come to a boil and then I'll add in the tomatoes. Let's talk about taxes. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when we have our side hustles, yeah. how do we manage our tax filings? Yeah. Do we do them on our personal or we put them in a separate filing? Um, yeah. We don't want Uncle Joe and those guys sure. coming looking for us, so. Yeah. And I don't, I definitely don't claim to be a tax accountant. There are tax strategists and people out there that I think everybody should have a person. Yep. Um, but some of the basics, so like, if you are, um, have your own side hustle or side business, you can decide to be an LLC, but you don't really need to. You can just be a sole, a sole provider. provider. Um, so in that case, you would file like your income and your expenses on, I think it's a Schedule C, mm -hmm. which is an attachment to your personal income. So, um, if you're not like it just depends like if you want to go after like loans and you know grants and some other things that you can get some more funding then you might need an llc mm -hmm. or if there's multiple people involved or if you you know if there's a risky business and you want to kind of protect some things you yeah. need an llc but if you just have your own business and you can just do it as a sole proprietor super easy but if you make more than four hundred dollars i think then you do have to well you should report all the income yeah but anything over four hundred dollars then it becomes tax so if i'm getting cash app or venmo over four hundred dollars yeah. i should probably you should probably include that you need to report your, that you got to report that and even if you do like for me sometimes i can do contract work uh -huh. um so even if i um, do some contract i'm helping somebody with their accounting their books or whatever if i get earn more than six hundred dollars i would also need to include that on um, my tax return they would need to send like a 1099 mm -hmm. so but then the other thing is like you want to make sure you're recording the expenses too which would offset yeah. the income and donations, and so maybe in, right. in development, I'm always talking about people yep. uh, having donations or tax credits that they can that's account right. for. Yep, yep, all of that. And that's important. I think sometimes we don't like, I want to put all of that in there. Um, like separating the business expenses mm -hmm. and activity from your personal business, um, your personal activity. One, it's easier to track. Like if you've got a separate bank account, you've got a separate, you know, business credit card, then when it comes to like your receipts and tracking all your activities right there in one place yeah. versus having to sort through your personal banking statements and be like, was this business or personal? You know, it just kind of convoluted there. So I would always recommend having those separate. Having separate accounts mm -hmm. for each. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if you don't have an LLC, if it's just a different business, still, mm -hmm. like, I would still separate it. That's smart. Yeah. So if I'm buying meals for business, yep. make sure I'm using business funds, yep. not my personal funds. Yep. And then the other thing about taxes, too, is, um, like, your expenses. What are some things that can be, like, written off, like, because they're business expenses? So if you work from your house, you know, mm -hmm. what percentage, like, your home office expense or you know, driving your car, or do you have business insurance, or um, if you are treating somebody to a business, you know, meal, just kind of remembering, like, anything related to your business can be considered a business expense that will go on that schedule fee. You're getting cooked down. I'm gonna use this to go with a kind of stir in here. That looks good, too. So we've got all our ingredients. Added some roasted tomatoes in there. Yep. So we can probably add this add spinach. spinach in. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Because yeah. they'll whittle down and yeah. be a whole lot less than what we put in there. I like kale too. I think kale's a good option, which doesn't it? it adds the crunch to it. Mm hmm It adds a different flavor than spinach That's true. a little bit. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. Everything looks like it's ready. So we're gonna combine these two, mix them up, and then dig into our soup. Dig in. Yum, this looks good. You did a good job. <laughs> Soup, it's hearty. It's healthy, yeah. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna like food <laughs> dance here. Food like, dance. yes. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. You gonna try it at the same time? All right. 
Yeah, yeah, full tomato in there. It's not too hot? Yes, it is. I have a baby now. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So what do you think is the most important aspect of finance that you want people to take away when you're talking to them? Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to like managing side hustles or household finances, things like that. Um, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, having like tracking your expenses and your revenue, like having some system, you know, mm -hmm. a budget. Um, so tracking, it can be simple as using spreadsheets or um, QuickBooks, any type of system, free software. Um, the other thing would be budgeting, like how are you spending your money and what are you doing with the money that you bring in. Um, I know a lot of you know small business owners that bring the money in and it goes right back out the door, mm -hmm. buying all of these miscellaneous things. But then how are you scaling? Like how are you planning for the future yeah. and all of that? So just having a budget, an operating budget, I think is helpful. And then sometimes you know they're not paying themselves, and so mm -hmm. how do you get to the point where you can pay yourself and you're not just you know doing a thing, providing a service? Um, and the last thing I would say, like having an actual you know business plan. Like, what is the actual goal of your organization? What, you know, do you want to grow it or do you want to mm -hmm. keep it small? Do you want to have employees? Do you need office space? Like, do you want to expand into different things? Like, what is the actual plan? Do you want to just have one line of service? Do you want to eventually branch off into these other things? But, and then that will help you, like, yeah, with your budget, budget yeah. and how much money you need to raise and you need to go after grants or mm -hmm. if the federal funding can get. Um, but having those, you know, two or three things up front would help yeah. with the, the long journey. Good to know. Yeah. Well, Zanae, thank you for cooking this amazing soup with me and sharing these tips with our audience and, you know, I'm really looking forward to growing opportunities to talk more about this. How can people find you, get in contact with you, or even just rely on you as a resource? Yeah, so I'm on all the socials. Um, my LinkedIn is just my name, Zanae Brooks, Z-E, capital N, A-I, uh, Brooks. Um, and then Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it's Lady Z, um, speaks, I have like a little blog situation. Uh, <laughs> so I'm on all the socials, but yeah, anything business related, accounting, if it's not me, I can. I have a network of yeah. people. I have a short list of you know black-owned, you know CPA and accounting and tax firms right here in the city. Mm -hmm. Other people that love to volunteer and do things, so I can definitely be a connector when it comes to that. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to this month's episode of Eat and Thrive. It is an amazing opportunity for us to learn about new healthy recipes and have some step-by-step. like this, you can reach me at mwide at buwellness.org. Find us on social media at BU Indianapolis and connect with me on LinkedIn.